a Hickok 45 with a Glock 43. Some people complain about the capacity of uh, these guns, but I just don't get it. Maybe it's because they just have one, you reckon? <laughs> yeah, Glock 43, let's take a look at it. Uh, we happen to have uh, multiple models, uh, and that has been nice because we've been able to to test and shoot of uh, well not a variety but a number of them i guess you could say we have three at the compound here first one you're looking at i believe yeah sure first one is uh and, a and that's the one i've been shooting the most okay i've been shooting all of them the last week and uh i have to say they all feel the same it's, it's interesting and that's been one of the advantages of having three of them is uh and you know if you know glocks uh i'm sorry glock haters maybe turn the channel <laughs> or something but if you know glocks you have fired glocks they they tend to be pretty consistent in sight sight picture and, and function and, and everything sometimes you'll get a funky trigger on one especially the older ones they used to have some really mushy triggers boy believe me so when i brag about a glock trigger uh, it's with glee because that means it's a, a crisp break and a lot of the early ones didn't have that but most of them now do i've discovered and i love that so uh put some good old federal uh 124 grain full metal jacket in here and i thought i'd just start off by again shooting all three we've been shooting them all got some uh, hollow points here and we have one that still you know has hardball in it so we have three mags of uh, another advantage of having three of them here. We have six magazines. They come with two magazines. So why don't we just take a shot. Let's load each one up here with hardball. Not put some grip tape on these so they look a little different. This one, you know, is right out of the box, of course. And the grip tape just peels right off, of course. But it just makes a world of difference for me. It, it really does. Uh, and I, 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 I highly recommend it. If you get one of these or you've got a 42, it adds just a little bit to the thickness, not much, and it gives you a much better grip, and it just feels 100% better to me. Of course, I have a large hand, so it's going to help me maybe more than you. Okay, so interesting firearm. Hasn't been out long, and uh, we're glad for it to get out uh, so we could get our hands on a couple. So I'm going to shoot some hardball with three different firearms. Now, the one without the grip is not going to feel as good to me. Why don't I start with it? So I'll have an excuse for missing. How's that? <laughs> All right, low capacity. Let's try this one. Woo. Let's put one on the gong. You reckon I can? Oh, got him. <laughs> okay, hard ball in this one. Okay. <laughs> a little trouble uh, on my two liter. So they seem to fire hardball and they have been firing hardball. And again, it's been nice having three of these for almost a week because I've been firing all of them. This one the most, again, the, yeah, 339, uh, extensively. Uh, I'd say at least 300 times. And uh, let's see, yeah. And I have fired uh, hollow points and i have fired uh, 115 grain ammo and of course mostly what i like in a nine millimeter is 124. you tend to get a better uh function with it you really do if you're going to have problems with nine millimeter range ammo most of the time it's going to be 115 grain of course that might be because that's what people shoot the most too right <laughs> so uh that's like saying most people are average right i think i made that comment one time pretty brilliant so what am i doing yeah okay well, let's shoot some uh this is federal, what is it? Yeah, the Hydroshock, there's a box, yeah, there's a box, okay? And we've got some others we're gonna shoot. Okay, let's get the ears back on. We've got a holler point. Let's smoke a pot with it. Whoa. <laughs> got him on the fall, I think. Oh, smart Alec. <laughs> Boy, that, that shocked him, didn't it? <laughs> And he's full of water, so I guess that was a hydro shock. Hydro shocking experience. Let's put a, uh, oh, there's a cowboy still alive. Can't have that. 
Let's put another one on the gong if we can. All right. Love that sound. I wonder if I could roll a pig. All right. <laughs> a pig killer. Let's remember that one. That one's a pig killer. Actually, they all uh, they all shoot well. They have so far. Okay, I was going for the plate. I was probably going left. One of the uh, things I've noticed, but hollering at you, is that uh, it is a thin gun. It's not as thin as a 42, but it's a thin gun. And with my large hands, if I'm not careful, I will tend to pull it left. And, and believe it or not, just wrapping that grip a little bit helps. And this one not being wrapped, I hear I'm using that for an excuse, but it, it really is. With a little thin gun, uh, I really have to watch it and get a good grip. Uh, and then they're fine. But you know what I mean if you have large hands probably and you ever get a really small gun in your hand. It's a pistol, all right? So, uh, what you just saw was amazing, right? No, what you just saw was what I've been experiencing. I've been shooting lots of different ammo and shooting them a lot, uh, again, especially that one, and they just work. So let me not confuse myself and get those out of the picture. But uh, I wanted to make that, that point or let you know that having uh, all of them, I did get the opportunity to steal the magazines out of them. I did have the opportunity to, uh, and having the six mags helped a lot too, to, to shoot them a lot, and uh, this one, you know, mainly. And, uh, and I, my experience has get, again has been the point of aim is the same on all three. The uh, function's been the same. The trigger is identical. They all have a nice, crisp break. Okay? So, and I've not had any trouble with any of them. So, just to let you know now. Before we load those, let me show you a couple things that I know you really want to know because I've been getting so many questions about it. We've had a lot of requests uh, to do this firearm. And, uh, and everybody wants it to, to be compared with everything. I don't want to turn this into a two-hour comparison. But we're going to just show you how it, how it measures up with some of the other really common single stack nine millimeters. Now I don't have every single stack nine millimeter. I don't have my nano out here. Can you find it? Uh, you know, <laughs> I was digging around the safe and I've got a little burst or something. But those guns are not nearly as popular as the Car PM9, the LC9, you know, the Shield, okay, and the XDS. Okay, now these are four of the very most popular most common single stack nines out there so if you've got a different one uh, that's fine uh, you probably know enough about one of these these four that you can kind of get an idea when I compare all right so let me start by uh, bottom line bottom line if you're familiar with the PM9 this will tell you a lot this gun let me put a mag in so we get the same length the Glock 43 basically is the same as a PM9 in every way in terms of measurements even even not too different in weight except the length you notice it's the same height it's about the same thickness it's just a longer okay and you would have guessed that the PM9 is about as small a package as you can get and have a nice little shootable nine millimeter single stack it, it really is it's just got a shorter slide that's that's the biggest difference in terms of size okay so PM9 but just longer. Right? And then of course, you know, it's Glock versus car. You know, there are other differences there. Another thing, another bottom line might interest you. I've got the Glock 26 and the Glock 42 out here. Uh, they're not single stack nines, of course. That's why they're banished to the end of the table. But notice this, the Glock 26 and the 43 are about the same length and height and, and everything. So I don't know, that's, four, that's on a little bump there. Yeah, if you get them on a level, our shooting table the boards are kind of warping there it's actually yeah they're the same exactly uh, the uh, 26 and the 43 are the, basically the same gun except the 43 is thinner okay and you can see that from the back it's thinner yeah but they're they're the same dimensionally except for that and let me go ahead and stick the 42 which is the 380 they just came out and you can see how they progress some people uh, claim that it's close to the 26, but it's really not. I think it's a closer measurement-wise to the uh, 42. You know, it really is. You don't feel like you've got a 26 that's just a little bit lighter or smaller. You feel like you've got a 42 in your hand 
that's a little bit just a little bit heavier and, and thicker that's does that make sense okay so I mean the 26 when you pick it up the 26 is a great gun it feels great uh, not too big to carry or anything but it just feels like a big block after you uh, you handle either one of these okay so these two are just thinner okay so put the 42 back up there uh, that's it I'll, I'll, I'll show you briefly my measurements now I, I got my uh, got myself a new caliper here and everything and I know measurements are important on this particular gun these pocket guns and all these small small guns I weighed them all very very carefully but then I just rounded up so roughly you can see there these first three the car the Ruger LC9 and the Glock 43 they are about the same weight. Car is just uh, an ounce less, uh, a round little. They're they're all uh, in, in terms of rounding. They're all like seem like they all came out like you know, like uh, 17 and 7 8, 17 and 5 8. So it wasn't any like gigantic rounding or anything. And those are my measurements though. And so those first three are very very similar, even on the the slide thickness. If you notice. Then I measured the frame thickness. I just measured right over the trigger on the frame thickness because if you're that far forward on the firearm around the trigger and that's that's involves holstering and everything didn't measure the slide lock button some of those are bigger on some guns than others but just want to get generally the thickness because uh, the slides not everything some guns have a a pretty thick frame uh, like the MP shield for example has a I got 90 hundreds on the slide but the frame you know 97 hundreds you know almost an inch so it just just depends Okay, uh, now notice your weights there while we're looking at that. If you were thinking a Springfield XDS, like, well, you can't decide. You might get a 43, but, you know, kind of went to Springfield. Well, you know, you're talking about a good bit difference in weight there. Springfield, 23 ounces. Okay, that's with an empty magazine in. All these are with an empty flush magazine. And so that's a pretty dramatic difference right there. The shield's 21 ounces. Okay, now if you don't carry... You've never carried a firearm, those weights won't seem much to you. But I tell you, if you pick these up, you can tell the difference. And then again, just for reference down here, I've got the Glock 42, it's just 14 ounces. You might have one of these, or the 26, it's 22 ounces. And again, unloaded magazine. Pretty interesting that the XDS is heavier than the Glock 26 by my weight. Okay, I remember them being about the same in an earlier video we had done a while back. Okay, so that kind of lets you know and then the capacity over there and you can refer back to that check that little progress bar down there and It'll tell you where that was. Okay uh, Give me your home address and I'll mail you one of these just kidding But uh, that that kind of gives you an idea about that at least according to my measurements and, uh, and everything. All right So let me load a couple of mags. Why don't we go ahead and try? Uh, I've shot a ton of 124. This is some uh, 115 as I have uh, told y'all before, we're very happy to be sponsored, uh, you know, in terms of ammo from, from Federal, and that's about all we need, you know. But uh, whenever we're testing something that's, uh, I don't like this, a little carry gun of some sort that we want to really check out uh, some things about it, we'll uh, occasionally get some different ammo for that. I feel like we need to. We're not an ammo evaluator or tester necessarily, or else we would not accept sponsorship you know from uh, an ammo company what did i do grab the wrong no that's right okay uh so i've got the shield we'll we'll put it up against it here too in a minute and uh the xds lets you let's see what that looks like i recently picked up a shield i have borrowed one and we've had one or two in videos i've never seemed to have one though when i need it and i have to borrow one and i'll be darned if i didn't uh find a used one the other not long ago for a really good price uh, the fellow owns a gun shop gave me a really good price on it. you know what I just bought the thing and uh, this is not a video about the shield but I really like the shield. <laughs> I've been shooting it some too and uh, it's interesting uh, nice gun all right let's shoot some 115 grain stuff okay I'm gonna use my this is actually a Glock 26 holster I think that yeah. can't believe it works I remember being really tight for the 26 Okay, this is 115 grain. Okay. It seems to work with any, well, it has worked with anything we've put in it so far. It's a little snappy, 
you might be able to tell that uh, which is one reason I have a band-aid on my finger okay I mentioned in the Facebook posting about this that it was killing my finger and it was and again that's partly because I have a long hand long finger and I don't grab a trigger like you're supposed to with the pad of your finger. If you do that, you have no problems, of course. But I come through there, I get a good grip on the gun, then wherever my finger goes through, so be it. All right, I know that's not the way you're supposed to do it, but it's the way I do it, I always have. And it rubs on that uh, trigger guard on the inside there and under recoil after two magazines really hurts. I'm really, okay. <laughs> as bad as any of these uh, firearms that I have finger problems with ever hurts, okay? So it's pretty dramatic. Now someone recommended on a posting to, they put some uh, clear fingernail polish and smoothed out the inside of that. And if that helped them, they're having the same problem with this gun, or that might've been someone else who was having the same problem with this gun. Uh, and I didn't do that, but I smoothed it out with some really fine grit sandpaper. Well, actually it was the other one, it was John's I did that on mostly. And it seems to help a little bit, okay? So just a tip, uh, if you get one of these and that hurts, there might be some things you can do on the inside of that. I'm gonna try that on my Glock 29, which, which I have the same problem with. Uh, the only Glocks that, that I have that with, period. The 29 and this one. So anyway, I went ahead and put the bandit on so I don't have to think about it and go ahead and shoot. And a lot of the shooting I did with this firearm in the last few days, I put a bandit on so I didn't have to think about that. I wouldn't be influenced by, by the pain. It, so it shoots the 117 grains just fine. Let's just try something else here for kicks. Uh, and then we'll, uh, these are some Hornady. You know, we'll feed some of those. It's a Glock. And as with any pistol, you need to check with whatever you want to carry and make sure it feeds it. But generally speaking, it seems to be Glock-like, all right? Uh, I can bring out my 19, my 26. I don't think I could find a round anywhere on the market uh, and put in it that it wouldn't feed. I, I really just have not been able to do that uh, with any Glock 9mm. So I would expect that out of this. Uh, so we're not going to spend an afternoon just shooting different ones. I've shot several, and they seem to work. I think what let's do. We got those two mags. Let's, uh, here's some Remington. Get all these. Uh, sorry, Federal. These Brand X rounds. We're going to try some yeah, different things. I bought just to to try. That looks like a some kind of variation of Golden Saber. And uh, see if it will feed. Okay, whatever we put in it here because it is a carry gun and that's pretty important being able to feed hollow points you mag those what else we got we got some uh hst here 147 this is what i carry okay we'll look mag of those i've shot some of those already i've shot all of these some except for the i guess that uh golden saber whatever that was was that golden saber that was a different Ultimate defense. Okay, whatever. Just wanted to pick up something different than what I usually have. All right, so we got a variety here. We'll just shoot some of these. All right, and we've already shot at all of them, though. You've seen the federal there. So this is uh, HST 147 grain stuff right here. All right, cycled her out of there. And this is some uh, Hornady Critical Defense. Let's get the cowboy with it. Let's defend ourselves against the cowboy. Okay, we are defended against him. Some of the uh, Remington, whatever it's called there. Something defense. The other cowboy needs to be hit. Okay, pretty good. Some more Critical Defense, a couple of rounds. Okay. All right. Enough with the hollow points. It seems to it seems to work. Uh, I've not been able to get a malfunction. I've tried to limp wrist it, in fact, and I've not had any luck with that. If you know what limp wristing is, so that's another thing. Before I load another magazine, though, let's see. A little more comparison. Don't want to bore you with too much comparison, but uh, I think it's important. Click. Put an empty mag in so we can get the the height and everything here. Here is the LC9. I didn't hold it up yet, did I? Uh, let's see, let's put it on that side. You know, we got a flatness problem here. John, we have to get another board because it's hard to, there we go, get it down in the valley there together. 
Now the LC9 is, uh, is seven shots in the mag, so that's why it's a little longer, right? Makes sense. It's pretty much proportionate. And it's about the same length. It's a little shorter than the Glock. The Glock 43 is, is not the shortest one out there, no doubt. They weren't worried about the length. Now that is one reason it feels good. It, it does, it feels good in your hand. You know, it doesn't feel like a little bitty gun for sure. Just like the 42, it's bigger than some of the other really little uh, 380s, but it feels good in your hand to shoot. Those of you who have fired it, it might be, you might not like the size, it's too big, but like this gun, it's stretched out enough to where it feels pretty good. And then the shield, shield holds seven in the magazine. So you've got the same thing, see? It stands a little taller, okay? So a lot of people were curious about the shield and comments. It's about the same length. Uh, it's just, it's, again, it's a longer grip. Uh, looks like, you know, on the trigger guard there too, but it's, it holds a few more rounds and it's heavier. Yeah, remember the weights, you can go back to that little handy dandy spreadsheet I put together. Uh, this gun, this gun feels great. It, it really does, fills the hand and everything. That extra round, a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. So it's another thing I wanted to talk about briefly. I don't know where this gun fits exactly. It's clear. Uh, it, it fits pretty well in this uh, LC9 holster. It's the only thing I have for it. Okay, I need a holster for it, but that's the only thing. It, it fits pretty well, so it tells you it's about the same size. And it can be a pocket gun, okay? You know, I've carried, even in jeans, I've carried that LC9. And uh, I could carry it. Now, it kind of prints because it's a little bigger than, say, the 42, isn't it? It's not a 380, so it's going to print a little bit. So it kind of depends on how big your pockets are, how loose you wear your jeans. If you wear skinny type jeans or something, you'll have a problem. If you're worried about it printing, you know, I worry about it a little bit, but not too much. It's legal to carry, so don't, don't worry about it too much. Uh, so it may be too big for a lot of you as a pocket gun. I don't know. I've been known to even carry a 26. Generally not in my jeans pocket, my cargo shorts pocket, looser pockets. Uh, it may be a holster gun like that, okay? Now, one thing I'm always telling you, reminding you that, okay, once you get out of the pocket and you move to your belt with a holster, because that means you probably, unless you're carrying open, you have a garment, you're covering it. Uh, do you really need a gun this small? You could very easily carry the 26. You could carry the 19, the 17. Carry a big old M&P, anything you want, can't you, if it's on your belt. Okay, so those are decisions you have to make. Because uh, most of you, if you're considering this firearm, you're, you're thinking carry, probably, okay? It's, it'd be a range gun, it'd be okay, but it's mostly for carry. Uh, however, I will say, uh, not to contradict myself too badly, I tend to want a bigger gun if I'm going to my belt, but I do like a gun that, that is just, you don't know you have it. It doesn't weigh much, and there it is. Of course, you give up capacity. So you can carry a Glock 19 with 15 plus 1 pretty easily under your garment pretty easily. It's not that heavy. Or 26. Uh, the difference is, I guess, these guns, the Shield 2, I've been carrying the Shield some, been carrying this, been carrying this for the last week just to get used to it, uh, to have a good feel for it, frame of reference. Uh, you don't know you have it. That's the difference. You know you got a Glock 19 or something, 26. You don't know you've got this on. But then again, you've got six plus one rounds. So those are the decisions you, know, you have to make. But there is a real appeal to a small, thin gun, even up on the belt. I'll say, I've changed my uh, attitude towards that a little bit, I think, over the years. They, it's just, it's so convenient. It, it's not going to print. It's against your body. It really is like you don't have it. Okay? So, anyway, just something to keep in mind. If it's not for the pocket, you are giving up a round because these guns are pretty much as thin. You hardly know you've got a shield either. You know, it fits in there. You've got seven rounds, better grip. Okay, something to think about. Same with the XDS. You got a heavier gun, but you got a thin gun, fairly thin, and you got seven plus one. You got a gun that's heavy enough, just like the shield, to, to shoot it really well. Okay, uh, so how much a snappy gun bothers you is a factor too. So I wanted to cover that a little bit. All right, what are the lies have I not told you? I did compare it with the 26 and, uh, and the 42. Didn't want to leave out, did I compare it with the uh, XDS? Okay, now your XDS, as you notice on the chart over there, it's your heavy gun. Great, that's why they're a great shooter. It's seven plus one, that's why it's taller. Okay. So again, it's basically a 26, uh, a thin 26 is what it is. Or you can look at it as a PM9 with a longer slide. 
okay, in terms of thickness, weight, and everything. As I said, there's not much weight difference between a PM9, LC9, or Glock 43. They're all 17, 18 ounces. They're all very light, they're very thin, and the one advantage of the Ruger is you get an extra round in the magazine though. Okay, you get seven plus one. All right, so we'll shoot a little more and I'll probably let you go. Okay, I know you're in a hurry to get to dinner. Uh, I'll be thinking, what was it else that I needed to uh, let you know about it? The negatives are, again, it, uh, that trigger guard, okay? And it could be, for you it may not be. You might shoot properly using proper technique. The tendency to want to shoot to the left, careful of that, the low capacity. And I know six and seven don't seem like much difference, but when that's all you have, it, it is. You can figure the percentage on that, so it is a difference. Uh, what else negative? Uh, it's an ugly Glock, right? Uh, we had, the only problem we have had, let's see, when John was shooting it here before the video, uh, the slide didn't lock back on uh, one of the extended mags, or one of the mags with the extender on it, I don't know. Uh, so other than that, we've had not a bobble through quite a bit of shooting from any of them. And uh, that's, that's always good, and I wouldn't expect that from a Glock, but you know the Glock 42 apparently came out before it was ready and uh, they had to do some modifications and uh, I think you can send them back and, and get the upgrade on the slide stop and, and the magazines now are a little bit different on the new ones and all that so you know uh, apparently hopefully that's not going to be the case with this one uh, sometimes gun companies like everybody else are a little too in a hurry too quick to get things out and uh, you end up with that kind of stuff. And uh, the problem with that one was that there was certain bullets, they were hanging up on the slide stop. But we've not had that experience with anything on this one. It just uh, cranks right on. I like it, I guess. Uh, of course I would when I like Glocks. Uh, I'm not sure where it would be. I, it's one of those guns, if you, if you carry, if you're a carry permit person, you're probably, you probably have two or three guns. Got another mag somewhere there. And uh, you, you alternate depending on weather, what you're wearing, and that sort of thing. Just like, uh, like this little thing, it's just a ticket sometimes. And sometimes it's a 26 for me, the 19. You know, or this, I can see that, or the shield, the XDS. Uh, I've been carrying this a lot. One thing I, excuse me, hope I can bring to the table is the fact that I do carry a lot. And I have carried this gun for months and months in my pocket. I've carried the XDS in my pocket a lot. I've even carried this, the 26, the 42. I've carried this for the last week in my pocket, both pocket and also on my hip because I, the weather has been really a variety in the last week. I've had shorts on, <coughs> excuse me, I've had jeans, I've had a long uh, cover shirt part of the time. We've had a real variety of weather last week. And so I've had opportunity to carry it in a lot of different ways as well. And the one thing I do have some experience with is carrying a pistol for, I guess, 30 years now. And uh, like I said, I, I pretty much told you my perspective on that. Uh, this one is a, it's a little big maybe for the pocket, and it's not very high capacity. Uh, when you get up to the hip, it feels great. But there are guns that have more capacity that you could be carrying. That said, it's a great little gun that seems to, to function uh, reliably, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rack the rest of these rounds through it here. And uh, let's see, we're gonna hit the gong a couple times. I think it needs to know we're here, don't you? All right, I think it does. I wonder if I could hit that turkey with this little thing. Pop. <laughs> uh, you know, I know y'all want me to shoot that chicken. I'll take a couple shots at it. Uh. Oh, I think I hit it. It didn't move, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> eh, it's fun to shoot at anyway.
<laughs> well, you can see the misses. It's right there at it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to put it in my holster. Now, I, here I am messing at a little chicken out there at 75 yards or 70, whatever it is. What the gun is for, of course, is this kind of stuff. All right? I almost forgot I had this target here. It's for when Mr. Bad Guy comes after you and you're not a pitiful, helpless, defenseless human being, right? At the mercy of whatever happens. Because you have something like this that's handy, small, that you can react with, okay? It's a carry gun. Up close, like that. You know? There's a couple there. Then again, there could be a cowboy a little further away. <laughs> a desperado like that who would need to be taken care of. So anyway, that's my take on the Glock 43. Uh, it, you know, all I can give you is my experience with it and uh, what I think about it. And uh, it's been very reliable. Uh-oh, put the ears back on. I found a loaded magazine. Sorry, John. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I am not going back to the loading table with a full magazine. <laughs> can't happen. <laughs> Let's get that other cowboy, that other desperado. Okay. Okay. Sorry, John. As I was saying, that's my take on it. It's a, it's a pretty cool uh, pistol. It works. Uh, I'm going to eventually want one probably. Like I said, this one goes back to Bud's for an auction and we're, we're happy to do that. And, uh, and uh, you know whatever they want to do with it because some of that will go to charity and uh, we'll be able to get any guns virtually we want that they have because there won't be any cost to them so uh, Glock 43 uh, I think it's a winner I have to say it's got a couple of those negatives I talked about but it's, it seems to work and it's uh, probably about the size it needs to be uh, from my perspective so John has shot it a fair amount too and he's harder to please than I am in a lot of ways and uh he likes it he's 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 anxious to uh take take his home so anyway when you got uh, some black plastic uh like this it's uh, life is good Okay, so the Glock 43, um, this thing has been anticipated for about 25 years. Uh, people have wanted something like this, and you know, finally it's here, and we don't know what to do. So I don't really know what I'm gonna say about it. No, but it, uh, it's, it's an interesting gun. Um, it's sort of just like a lot of these um, guns do. Uh, it kind of falls in between categories. Uh, there is no such thing as a perfect gun, unfortunately. Um, Wait, yeah, there is Glocks. I forgot. Uh, Glock Perfection, right? I forgot about that. No, but uh, there, there is no perfect gun. Uh, nothing fits, fits perfectly into, into anything. And this is no exception. But it, uh, it fits pretty nicely into one category that I've sort of uh, kind of d determined on my own based on my own personal biases. And because I can be kind of a wimp about concealed carry, I'm real picky. Uh, I like to be comfortable. You know, I'm not afraid to uh, to die every time I walk out the door. You know, and uh, that's nothing against people who want to carry a, you know, a full size, you know, a Glock 17 with eight extra magazines strapped to them. I mean, that's no, fine. That's it's a free country. That's freedom. Like we should be allowed to protect ourselves based on what we feel subjectively are reasonable means. But my subject subjective reasonable means is a small comfortable gun because it's not very likely that I'm going to be in a shooting. I, you know, I don't make people mad, I don't have too many enemies. And I, you know, now that I don't work security anymore, I stay away from uh, you know, bad neighborhoods so, you know, for the most part. Um, so I like to be comfortable. And normally, as you guys know, I carry my car P380, uh, which I always have. And that's the whole point of carrying a gun. You should carry what you're going to always have. You know, if you carry an awesome gun half the time, then it's like not carrying a gun at all because, as we all know, things always seem to happen when we don't have the right tools. 
So if I've got pants on, I'm gonna have my, my car P380. Uh, so as long as I don't get caught with my pants down, I'm good. Um, in that case, I might be able to you know, reach down and grab it, grab it out of the pants. Um, but what this kind of fits in for me is as an extremely light, low profile uh, belt gun. Um, this is, it's like just slightly too big for the pocket, but for me at least, but when it comes to a gun you're gonna put on your belt, it's like as small as you can possibly get. Now, I would never carry a 380 on my belt because to me, a, the point of a 380, at least for me, is as a pocket gun because you can make a 380 really small enough to put it in a pocket. So that's what a 380 is to me, it's a pocket gun. Um, so I would never carry a 380, a 380 on the belt, even though there are some good bigger 380s like some of the Bursas and stuff like that. But I like the idea of carrying a 9mm give me a little more punch without sacrificing uh, too much of the, the comfort that I like, you know, uh, when I'm carrying. So this kind of fits in a cool little category for people like me who like to be comfortable, but they'd like to also have a 9mm and they want something that's reliable because it is a Glock. I mean, assuming it doesn't have the growing pains like the 42 did, it's probably going to be pretty reliable. So that's sort of in a nutshell, kind of like where I see it basically. Um, a good holster gun for lazy people, basically.